Tonight, we're going to be talking about sustainable building research. And as I mentioned, we have this exhibit coming up called Sustainable Shelter. And two of the members of the exhibit team are here tonight. Um, that's not the only thing they do. I'm standing in front of them. Um, Rachel, they're hiding behind me. Um, Rachel O'Malley and Dan Handeen are research fellows at the Center for Sustainable Building Research, which is at the University of Minnesota, and is one of the co-sponsors of the Sustainable Shelter exhibit. Now this is the mission statement I pulled off CSBR's website, but I'm going to read it because I think it'll give you a little bit of background uh, about what the Center for Sustainable Building Research is about. Um, they do work, which is research, outreach, and education, that's about transforming the regional built environment to provide for economic, ecological, and social needs of present generations without compromising those of the future. Does that sound familiar to anybody, that little statement? Yeah, maybe a little bit about what sustainability is all about. We're going to hear more about that from these guys in just a little bit. But I wanted to first say that I think when we think about sustainable building solutions, sometimes we want to jump right to these really high-tech um, new solutions and new products that you can buy and, and new houses you can build, which is good. You know, those are some of the solutions. But um, there's also a role for conservation, good old-fashioned conservation, <laughs> and also some new ways of thinking about how we dwell in, in our homes and apartments. And so these guys are going to present um, some perspectives that are kind of on that spectrum. And they've got an activity plan that's going to be um, fun to get you guys participating. Um, and I want to encourage you to interject if you have questions. Um, I'm going to be running around with a microphone. Um, and you can flag me down. And I like that. I like people to use the microphone because not everyone can hear um, as well as others. And so it helps. Um, to do that. And then also, if you have ideas, if they're, if they're kind of presenting something and you think, oh, that reminds me of this book I just read or of a film I just saw, and you think people here might be interested, that is also OK to interrupt with that. Um, and we want this to be kind of a conversation. So as soon as these guys get through some slides and some things that they've planned, um, we'll open it up. And I encourage you to think broadly. And you know, these guys aren't experts in everything. Um, but I'm sure they'll try to answer <laughs> your questions the best that they can. Um, and if you have expertise that you know comes into question, feel free to also um, interject with that. So with that, um, Dan and Rachel are here, and let's give them a round of applause. Thanks, Shanae. So I'm Dan. I'm Rachel. And uh, we're research fellows. <laughs> um, that, that's a very ambiguous title for what we do. Um, we both, as Shanae mentioned, work at the Center for Sustainable Building Research. And that encompasses a lot of different things. But basically, what we do is we act as a bridge between the academic community at the university and the professional community out in the world and some laity. Um, and so we work in all kinds of different things, everything from affordable housing work to life cycle assessment of building materials. Um, we do community design assistance and efficient windows research, and we helped design the Sustainable Shelters exhibit. So you should all go check it out at the Bell Museum. Um, and so we're excited tonight um, because usually, like Dan said, we're working with building professionals, but um, we're excited to be able to bring um, some of our research to a wider audience this evening. Is there a MCAD class here? <laughs> Thank you for padding the audience. We appreciate that. Mr. Professor, as well. whoever you are. Um, so we're going to start this presentation the way that you are actually um, obligated to start all presentations about sustainability, which is to say, what is sustainability? Standard protocol. And then you say, oh, damn it. <laughs> That's exactly what you say. <laughs> God damn it. Um, then, OK, you hope this continues to work. Um, you say, Sustainability means meeting the needs of the present without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own needs. Ta-da! Ta-da! Right? Everybody's heard this before, the Brundtland definition. 
Um, so this is great. I mean, it sounds good. It makes sense. It sounds like something we all want to do. The problem with it is that it's really hard to go from this conceptual definition to action, to what should I do if I'm building a building or just going about my day. Um, so so yes. we're going to go from this into a little exercise. And how do we translate this into action? And so we're going to invite you to participate in a game of Mad Libs. I'm sure you've all played this in the car when you were kids. And we're going to be asking for a number of eco-adjectives, um, including ones like we have listed up here. So feel free to use this as a launching point. Um, right. You've seen these words all over there on the food you buy, the houses you buy. Um, and they're all good words that mean good, happy environmental things. So um, start off the Mad Libs. And feel free to just shout them out. We'll, we're going to be asking for some other words as well. Right. <laughs> okay, that's the first one. Hippie is the first one. I need six more, more eco-adjectives. More eco -adjectives. Reused. Reused. Compost. Composted. Upcycled. You got upcycled? I got upcycled. Okay, come on. We need more. Cradle to grave. Cradle to grave. Very good. One more. I'll use equitable and then regenerative. Okay, I got regenerative. Regenerative. <laughs> I think we're out. Okay, I think we got them all. All right. I need a uh, an author's name, last name. Vonnegut. What was that, Vonnegut? Vonnegut. Um, I need a hippie first name. Butterfly. I need a generic first name. I need the name of a sustainable grocery store. Whole Foods. I need the, uh, the name of a spice or herb. A last name. Smith. Smith. <laughs> A Feel color. free to use your own last name. Ochre. Ochre. Fuchsia. I'll go with fuchsia. Um, a type of tree. Oak. Oak. I need another last name. <laughs> I need another type of tree. Maple. 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 Not a tree. <laughs> They're young. Oh, um, I need a natural fiber. Sisal. We'll do bamboo. Uh, an adjective. Bamboo. <laughs> an animal. I heard mole first. I need. Um, a hippie profession. Walking. Walking. <laughs> I need a natural feature, like, you know, of the landscape. Geyser. Mountain geyser. Animal. A what? Surfit. Um, I need uh, an Asian country. <laughs> I'm sorry about the bamboo comment. <laughs> I need uh, the name of a big box store. Um, a an alternative fuel. I need an eco car. Um, 
I need a type of animal shelter. An, like an animal created shelter. Nest. Um, I need a piece of exercise equipment. Um, I need an electric luxury item. I'm sorry, what was back there? Computer. Computer? to exercise restraint on that one day. <laughs> Dan needs a... Um, a large yeah. SUV. Hummer. We'll go with the Hummer. What was your eco car, Prius? Prius. Okay. All right. Okay, Shania, we need your help. So, with the, your help... We have designed our dream eco home. <laughs> and Dan's going to come back on stage any minute now and help me tell you about it. I think he found some costumes. Hi. You're in front of our eco home. Of course I'm in front of our eco home. <laughs> I'm Todd Smith O'Brien. And I'm Butterfly Smith O'Brien. I'm a hippie lawyer. And I'm a stay-at-home walker. <laughs> These are our kids, Vonnegut, Bamboo, and Turmeric. We'd like to show you around our new GREED-certified home. It was really important for us to get as many points as possible. It has reused siding, composted insulation, and cradle-to-grave shingles. Come on in. We usually enter through the mudroom instead of the foyer. Um, this is the kitchen. We love the kitchen. It's so big. Right away, you'll notice the upcycled countertops and the equitable cabinets and the dual ovens. We splurged on the largest Energy Star refrigerator we could get. There's Whole Foods frozen pizzas that lay flat, and there's room for everyone's favorite flavor of blue sky soda. You can see here the windows look out on Fuchsia Servet Creek. We built as close to it as possible. This is the dining room. We usually eat in the breakfast nook, but it's nice to have a place in case we host holiday dinners. The table is actually made out of very local wood. It's oak and maple made from a few of the trees we had to clear to build the house. The living room is here next to the dining room, but we spend most of our time in the family room. The living room is beautiful, though. We love the hundred bulb chandelier. All compact fluorescents, of course. And the bamboo floors imported from Thailand. We picked these high-efficiency floor-to-ceiling windows to frame the view of our four-acre yard with native prairie planting. It's too bad we're only in here after dark. I have my work-at-home office here. I rarely need to take my medical marijuana scooter into the office <laughs> because right, right here I've...